talk on this lesson today from the book of Acts, chapter 20. You may all be seated. So the word says in 20th chapter of Acts, in verse 17, it says, From Miletus he sent to Ephesus and called the elders of the church. This is Paul. And when they had come to him, he said to them, You know, from the first day that I came to Asia, what manner I always lived among you. Your reputation speaks loudly. It speaks after you've gone. It, spe it speaks before you get to where you're going. So make sure that your reputation is something that you can be proud of and not ashamed of. 19 says, serving the Lord with all humility, with many tears and trials, which happened to me by the plotting of the Jews. How I kept back nothing that was helpful, but proclaimed it to you and taught you publicly and from house to house. Testifying to Jews and also to Greeks, repentance toward God, faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, I repent. Lord, I trust you. And see how I go bound in the spirit to Jerusalem and Jerusalem, not knowing the things that will happen to me there, except that the Holy Spirit testifies in every city, saying that chains and tribulations await me. Get this, mark this in your book. But none of these things move me, nor do I count my life dear to myself, so that I may finish, so that I may finish, so that I may do what? Finish. So that I may finish my race with joy. And the ministry which I receive from the Lord Jesus, to testify to the gospel of the grace of God. But none of these things, no matter what's in front of you, change, tribulations, trials, death even, but none of these things move me. I'm not scared of that stuff. Nor do I count my life dear to me. It's not mine anyway. It belongs to God. So that I may finish my race. Not, I don't want to just stop for a coffee break or water break or a long distance run. No. I want to finish my race and I want to finish it with joy. I want to finish the ministry which I received from the Lord Jesus to testify to the gospel of the grace of God. And indeed, now I know that you all, among whom I have gone preaching the kingdom of God, will see my face no more. This is it between us. It's not that I don't want to see you, but, but I, I've already been alerted that I'm going to be killed. So, so I won't see you again. This is my farewell, my bidding. 26. Therefore, I testify to you this day that I am innocent of the blood of all men. Mm -hmm. In other words, I've, I've never done anything that would cause a person to suffer, mm -hmm. knowingly or unknowingly. Therefore, I testify to you this day that I am innocent of the blood of all men. That includes fleecing you out of your money. Mm -hmm. Not, I don't run a scam. Therefore, I testify to you this day that I am innocent of the blood of all men, for I have not shunned to declare to you the whole counsel of God. I preach to you exactly what the Bible says. Amen. Amen. 
Didn't add anything to it, didn't take anything away. I, I just not, I've, not, I've not done anything that would be opposed to Scripture. I have not shunned to declare to you the whole counsel of God. It wasn't always appreciated. It wasn't always accepted. People would get angry with you, but I still preach it because that's what God assigned me to do. For I have not shunned to declare to you the whole gospel of God. And let me tell you something, Paul. In effect, he's saying, I'm not angry. I just want you to be clear of what my assignment is and what it was. And this is the report I will give when I get to glory. For I have not shunned to declare to you the whole counsel of God, his entire word. Yes, we talked about joy. And yes, we talked about being delivered. And yes, we talked about being filled with the Spirit. But I also told you that let every man have his own life. Amen. I told you that. I told you don't go sleeping and slipping around my back door. Don't, be, don't do those things. I told you that too. I told you that lying was, was a sin. Amen. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know you like the joy part. I know you like the shouting part. And all that's good. And I like it too. But I also think you should know that the Bible says, Thy shall not lie, thy shall not murder, thy shall not covet. Yeah, yeah. The whole counsel, not part of the counsel. Mm -hmm. Therefore, verse 28, Therefore take heed to yourselves and to all the flock among which the Holy Ghost has made you overseers. He's talking now specifically to the pastor has made you overseers to shepherd the church of God, which he purchased with his own blood. Think about that. No preacher is going to get from underneath this. You can be mega or you can be many. Doesn't matter. If you, if you say God called you and you stood up behind the pulpit, whether you are fake or not, you're going to have to pay one way or the other, it's going to come and you're going to have to face the consequences of whatever it was that you chose to do. I, you know, this is a scary job. Because you got to answer God for every person that was under your care. That, this is a scary job. And I tell you something, the world is getting too dangerous to live in. Not not, not because of bad people, but because good people sit back and let bad people do bad things. Yes, yes, yes. It's just comfortable with it, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, they don't get any on me. It's coming to you. Yeah, it is. Your star today might be an orange star, but, and they get in the yellow star, but when they run out the yellow stars, what do you think they're going to do? Uh -huh. we got to develop our own agenda as a people. I said, well, that, that sounds very racist. Well, I don't know how it sounds to you. If you say it sounds racist, that's your business. If you understood the history of racism, you know that I, there's no way for any of us in this room to be a racist. That's right. That's right. But we need to develop our own agenda. What's, what do you mean by that? It means that we should develop families that are tight enough that they don't have to run somewhere else to get soulless. Yeah, yeah. Your sons and daughters, grandsons, granddaughters, great grandsons, great granddaughters, they ought to know that they're part of something bigger than just themselves. Yes, yeah. yes. They don't have to run out and get some other group in order to find significance. They don't have to run out and get some other group in order to find security. They don't yes. they shouldn't have to run out and find some group in order to feel accepted. Yes, yes. Amen. I hear people crying about taxes. This is not a political conversation, although Jesus was a politician. Mm -hmm. I heard a guy say the other day, if you, if you eat, food is politics. Mm -hmm. If you drink water, water is politics. Yeah. If you live in a house somewhere, land is politics. Yes, yes. So how can you not be about politics? But this is not one of those messages. They were talking about taxes, and I looked at my taxes the other day, and I thought it must be going crazy. Stone crazy. <laughs> Stone crazy. Listen, Pastor, I mean, they're losing their mind. Yeah, they are. Now, I know you're trying to run the rest of us out of here. You've, got, you've taken us down from 15%, and now we're below 6%. Mm. 
I know you're trying to get the rest of us out, but some of us is not moving. That's right. So, so it's not about, about saying no new taxes. It's really about a more equitable and fair distribution of taxes. Right. Yes. I, I don't want to pay for, for, for what I have to pay for. Right. But, 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 but don't take from me in order to take care of someone who could buy you. That part. Yes. We got to stop being the instruments of our own destruction, is what I'm trying to say. That's what Paul was saying. Look, I told you everything. I held back nothing from you. So we have to, we must. There is a need to search deep in our hearts and find out what programming did our foreparents get on the colonies or on the plantations that caused them to always be at odds with each other. What for programming was and, and then how did that programming <coughs> filter down through the generations yes. huh. so that even not knowing that I am now subject to operating in that self-destructive mode? Right. Uh -huh. Amen. What is that all about? I mean, how did that happen? It's very simple. Slave owner understood is more of them than it is of, of us. Mm -hmm. There may be 8, 10, 12 of us in our house. But we got 25 to 30 working out on the plantation. So one night, I don't want them to get the idea that they're more than us and therefore come in and slaughter us. We don't want no more than turners. We don't want, no, we don't want any more. We, we, we got to make certain that we keep them apart. So what do we do? Let's bring separation between them. Get the ones who are the lighter skin. Put them in here in the house and let them be closer to us. Then the ones who are in between that, put them in the yard some of them in the barn, and then put the rest of those sowings sort of out in the field. Mm -hmm. So then the, the field hands will always be angry with the barn hands and the yard hands. Uh -huh. The yard hands and the barn hands will always be upset with the field hands. I'm, using, I'm cleaning this up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. You yes, sir. So if there's anything going on, we will have them form a plantation improvement committee. We will call it the PIC. And the PIC will be made up of at least a representative from the field, a representative from the barn, a representative from the yard, a representative from the house, and then two or three of my own sons and daughters as the owner. You all would you would start talking about how can I make things better on the plantation? Think about how ridiculous that is. I'm living on a plantation. I'm a slave, and how can I make things better on the plantation? Of course, they would have hung me. I already know that. So, if you're thinking about it, I already know that. So the pick would meet every month, talk about what's wrong. Talk about what needs to be done. Then go back out and pick that cop. Uh -huh. But things began to happen where the owner, slave master, couldn't hear all that was happening because he, he didn't trust anybody who was, who was not his cop. Uh -huh. And he had no cop. Uh -huh. So he said, we need to have another group that will search out what the pick is doing. So they formed a plantation advisory committee. And they call that the PAC. So now you have the PIC and the PAC. We still have PICs and PACs. Yes, we do. Right now, that's what's in our that's what's in our system. And unless we intentionally decide not to operate in the scenarios that have been placed before us, we will continue the same self-destructive behavior down through the generations, including your great-grandchildren. Mm -hmm. So what I'm sharing with you, I'm done with that. I'm not going to go any further because I get upset with that part. What I want you to understand is that we, have, we must stop being the instrument of our own destruction. And when I read what Paul says here, Paul is saying, look, I didn't hold back anything. I knew that it would be unpopular. I knew I would not become the man of the year. I knew I wouldn't make it on the front of, of, of Fortune magazine. I knew that. But what I want you to know is that that wasn't my objective. My objective was to make certain that you knew exactly what God said and what he required. So once I've done my job, I want you to know they can kill me, but so what? When I wake up in the morning, I'm going to be with the Lord. Yes. Yes. 
So why in the world do you think you're going to scare me with that, that death threat? Look, it's not safe for communities. No, 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 no. Not safe for community conversation. We need a how and what are we doing in our houses. Amen. We have to get to the point where we're no longer afraid of sitting on the back of the bus. Oh, we don't even ride the bus anymore. You're sitting on the back of the bus. No, I'm not asking well, how much you be paying monthly for your automobile. Yeah. That you probably should have bought uh, one that was half as much. But how much are you paying monthly? Well, I'm not about this. Then you're on the back of the bus. You're always on the back of the bus anytime you're operating at the mode where you can, you can barely breathe. You got so much debt, it's just squeezing the breath out of you. You're in the back of the bus. Why would you say that? Because it was on the back of the bus where the fumes were. The back of the bus. You notice you don't hear people saying, well, we protest being on the back of the train. You know why? Because we sat on the front of the train. Because in the front of the train is where the fumes were. Anywhere we could be choked out. That's where we find ourselves. I just want you to think about what I'm saying here so that you can see that Paul's statement to the church was real. Uh, a lot of our people are not bad parents. They're not bad parents. They're not parents at all. You're not a parent if you're competing with your daughter. I'm sorry. You're trying to, you're trying to be as hot as she is? Come on. Give me a break. God made them hot for a reason. Y'all don't hear me now, and you don't want to hear this. I know it, but I'm going to tell you. Let me tell you something. In that age, in that, when that, at a particular age, that young girl is beginning to understand womanhood, and not fully, but understanding that there's certain things happening in her that is kind of interesting. And she starts to dress a certain way and, and look a certain way, and is very particular about her hair and particular about her makeup. Well, that's natural. There's nothing wrong with that because she's being prepared for the guy who's looking for her to marry her. That's what it is, dating and mating. So she's being prepared. She doesn't understand the dynamics because she didn't have anybody to teach her the dynamics often. But she does, she does know that there is something about her new self that she likes. And she expects someone else to like it who is not female. Now, there are some females who, who like it, too. We can talk about that in another setting. We're not talking about that here today. But just know that when we do talk about it, you're going to be highly upset. So, so here, here, here's the deal. So she's looking like a fresh flower. That's because she is a fresh flower. Amen. And there's someone who is now reaching a certain age, probably a couple of years older, not a lot, but a couple of years old, a few, who is at that maturity level because girls are mature at a faster rate than guys. So you can't be this guy her age. It's probably going to be about here. Sometimes, depending upon what the settings might be, it may be equal, but normally that is not the case. And Mama and used to say, you fast. You're just a fast little soldier. That's what they used to say, but they don't say that anymore. Because Mama ain't paying no attention. Mama too busy trying to look hotter than she is. <laughs> what you trying to catch? I don't understand that. I'm serious about it. I don't understand. Well, the problem is, is that you were not functionally taught how to be a parent. Mm. Why not, Pastor? Why would you say that my mom and my dad did a good job of raising us? Yes, they did. But how many times did they take you to the book of life? The book that God says you should read and show you what God expected of you. Well, how many times did that happen? Well, we, didn't, we were really involved in other things. I rest my case. We need to get back to the point where we're teaching this little girl, don't be ashamed of that. Amen. It's okay. Don't feel like you, you've suddenly been pushed away. It's okay. You, you, yes, be beautiful. Now, it's all right to be beautiful. Beauty was three Bs. You know what they are. You need beauty, booty, and brains. <laughs> yeah, you heard it here. <laughs> but look, 
if you got the beauty and the booty and no brains, more than likely you won't get anything else that's worthwhile. So teach them how to develop their brains above the beauty and the, and the butt. Don't have the butt thing being a big deal. I know it's a big deal today, but the butt thing is no big deal. Sometimes you talk about how big the butt is, that's a fat person. So don't, don't get caught up in that. that. That don't mean it's fine just because you got a big butt. You hear what I'm saying? What you need is a big brain. Big brain. Hello? A big what? Big brain. So if she has a big brain and she meets a guy who wants to play the game and she listens for a minute or two and she does this, talk to the hand and I'm gone. But the guy who's looking for her, because God says a man finds a wife. Yes. We got to teach our girls, stop running after guys. Yes. Don't do that. Don't do that. I got my call to the ministry with some girls one time who we were coming out on Taylor and what? Home one Street, Washington. Taylor and Washington, you know what happened on Taylor and Washington. And uh, they were working girls, and they said, yeah, they were, they were pretty too. And, uh, yeah, they did, I'm just gonna tell you. I'm sorry, I, just, I think you ought to tell the truth and shame the devil. So, so they, they, they looked apart and they break, and they knocked on the door, and I was just coming from church. All tied down and, you know, Going home to my wife. Knocked in the window, stopped at the stop sign, knocked in the Hey, you look like you need a date. No, I don't. <laughs> no, I don't look like I need a date. Well, you know you're looking all good, you're all tied down and everything. I said, well, that's probably true. <laughs> you probably got that part right. But I don't look like I need a date. Well, you ought to have a date. So she calls over two more friends. Come on, let's give him a date. You don't have to pay us. No, if I do, I'm going to pay a lot. <laughs> Ooh, my goodness. Well, and the conversation went on and on, but you don't need to know the rest of that detail. But what I want you to understand is that when they were finally back up to the curve, I just, my windows are closed now. And I say, well, Lord, because we've just been talking about evangelizing people and, and spreading the gospel. I said, but they don't go to church. I said, well, Lord, who's going to tell them? And my car filled up with the voice of the Lord says, that you've been called to tell them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It messed me up so bad when I finally got home in tears. I don't know how I got home. And I come in, and I was hesitant about what to say. I didn't know how to operate. It was really something. What I want you to understand, though, is that God chooses who he uses. Yes. So in that case, they had all the beauty they had the butt, but they didn't have the brains enough to know that you should not be out on this corner hustling, trying to make your living this way. I don't care what they say about shake your money maker. That thing don't make no money for you. It makes money for your parents. That's right. So it was a dangerous game is what I'm trying to get you to understand. So, so get the girls to understand. Don't go looking. Be available, but don't go looking. And don't be available in the places where they pull up just catfish. Uh. <laughs> what does that mean, Pastor? You gotta ask the question you wanna understand the answer. But none of these things move me, nor do I count my life dear to myself, so that I may finish my race with joy and the ministry which I received from the Lord Jesus to testify to the gospel of the grace of God. That's why I'm here. That's my purpose. And, in, and, and this is what Paul is saying. That's my purpose. And indeed, now I know that you all, among whom I have gone preaching the kingdom of God. That's all I preach, Paul says. The kingdom of God. You will see my face no more. But you're going to remember what I told you. When you're, those of you that leave here today, you're going to remember what you heard from the preacher who preached the message today who cut with a, a very sharp, sharp sword. And you're going to remember this. And indeed, now I know that you all, among whom I have gone preaching the kingdom of God, will see my face no more. Therefore, i got to take advantage of this moment, he said. Therefore, I testify to you that this day that I am innocent 
of the blood of all men. I have not held back what God said. For I have not shunned to declare to you the whole counsel of God. And then you preachers, you pastors, you shepherds, therefore take heed to yourselves, to all the flock among which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers, yes, to shepherd the church of God, which he purchased with his own blood. That's what you're going to be held accountable for. Amen. Every preacher is going to be held accountable for that. Well, you know, I, 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 I used to be, but I, I, I realized I need to get back and make myself a living, right? You know, grab the plow and then turn loose. That's not the way it works. And for the Bible readers, you know what I'm saying. Paul goes on to say, for I know this, that after my departure, savage wolves will come in among you not sparing the flock. Also from among yourselves, listen now, from among yourselves, people in your church, from among yourselves, people that you run with, from among yourselves, folk in your own house, from among yourselves, men will rise up speaking perverse things to draw away the disciples after themselves. Amen. Satan is not scared of you. Right. Satan is not scared of me, but he ought to be scared of the Christ in you. Yes. Yes. So when he, when he runs, and when you read in the book of James, chapter 4, verses 7, when you read where the scripture says, look, you don't have to be scared. Submit yourself, therefore, unto God. Right? Do what first? Submit. Yes. Submit yourself, therefore, unto God. Yes, then resist the devil. Yes, sir. Here's the good news. And he'll run away. Yes. Yes. We scared of the devil. No, the devil's supposed to be scared of you. What do you mean scared of me? The Christ in you. So if you submit to God, you're now letting the Christ in you direct you. Then you resist him and the enemy cannot overcome Christ. Never could, never will, and cannot from this point forward. This is what I come to teach you today. Hello, this is Sterling Land. I serve as the senior pastor of the Greater Calvary Bible Church International. I'm inviting you to come out and become a part of a great family. You will love it here and we'll love having you here too. We're at 6510 Berkman Drive. 6510 Berkman Drive, Greater Calvary Bible Church International. We're waiting for you. We have a seat with your name on it. Bless you.